in the 22 villages of fishing community at the coastal area of Shitakundo in Chittagong lying close to the lap of the Bay of Bengal with unique natural beauty. This poverty stricken fishing community has been living here generation after generation since time immemorial and earning their living. Even they are supplying a significant portion of protein for humans. Recently, these fishermen have become helpless and penniless, falling victims to terrible persecution and oppression of the pirates. Despite all the odds, they have to carry on this risky profession as no other better alternative has yet to be found. As our nets float on the surface of the deep sea, the pirates in the guise of fishermen approach near the boats. They bind our hands and feet to the bamboo poles and pull the nets in the sea. They have dows, knives, spades, spears and many such other weapons with them. They usually form a group of 16 or so. We are not allowed to utter a word. They beat us black and blue and throw us into the vast expanse of the sea. People of southern regions, mainly those from Shondip, Hatia, Ramgoti, live by pirating in the sea. They torture our fishing community. Out of my 27 nets, the pirates have snatched away 26, leaving only a mobile phone number during departure. Talking with them over phone, I have come to know that the phone number belongs to one Boshi Dakwait of Urichor. I start for Shundip from Chittagong to call on that Boshi Dakwait. Then I turn into almost mad. I became determined to take the profession of rickshaw pulling instead of fishing any longer. Let them plunder my property instead of killing us. They beat us seriously and dismantle machine from our boats and set it free. On the eve of their departure, they beat my father, other boatmen. My father was a very simple man. Being afraid, he jumped into the sea and could not rise up again. The pirates jumped over our boat, tying our boat with one another. They broke my hands by beating with spade. We were eight in number and some of us were sleeping. We had nades, monkeys and many other things. Taking away my chain and wristwatch, they pushed me down into the sea. Going afar, they threw another. In this way, they threw eight of us and fled away with our boats, nets and fish. The pirates plundered our fifty nets. The other two fishermen who were with us are also very poor and helpless. I have no way out and I am helpless now. My wife and children are lamenting pitches. Our sorrowful life will never be ended. Our fishing community is very helpless and this helplessness comes from two ways man-made and sometimes created by nature. The materials of our living and earning are nets, bows, engines. When the pirates take away these things by beating us mercilessly, we turn in a fix and don't know what to do then. In our Chittagang, there is an Omorali market at Chaktai and our fishing materials are available. A handful number of businessmen patronize those pirates. 
Looting our fishing materials, the pirates sell them to the shopkeepers at a high rate. Bangladesh is a poor country. No job is available even after receiving higher education. We won't engage our children in this profession. Our only hope is to educate them properly and engage them to other fields of job. The fishermen go to sea to fish and fall victims to piracy. When the news of piracy comes to me, I, as chairman of the locality, raise it to the law and order committee. But no effective measures are taken. Necessary arrangements for bringing the community to the arena of safe zone are not materialized. Industrial police forces are being posted in the industrial zones. Similarly, naval police forces may be formed for the sea boundaries and the patrols of naval police and coast guards are to be increased in order to collect fish in a secure environment. The incidents of piracy have elaborately been discussed in the monthly meetings of the district commissioner. The disturbances are in between the channel of Shundip and Shitakundo. We have proposed to post coast guards here. And the matter has already been reported to the Prime Minister and Home Minister as well through DC. But for the time being, we have asked for a special police patrol in the area. We have already informed the highest authority of the deep sea piracy. The police have the shortage of patrol boats and if we can supply the boats and post a coast guard team, we think this problem will be solved soon. The motionless boats standing at shore are without nets and engines. The fishermen are at a loss, having lost everything at the hands of the pirates. They will again set sails in the deep sea, with the fishing nets and engines borrowed at an exorbitant rate of interest. Being further assailed by the pirates, some of them will get back home in a state of utter destitution, losing all their nets and engines and some of them will lose themselves in the sea for good. Despite the repeated assurances given to them by the administration, the hooliganism of the pirates is yet to be stopped. Neither was it possible to rescue the fishermen from the march of utter destruction. As no effective measures were taken to resist piracy, safe fishing in deep sea for the sake of fishermen's livelihood could not be ensured.